Hello and welcome to another If The Screen discussion. Um, my name is Nathan Griffin and today we are delighted to be joined by the cast and crew of Tarok. Uh, welcome guys, it's lovely to see you. Um, today, today we are joined by exec producer Claire Wilde, producer and story writer Cleone Nibuchlia, uh, director Declan Rex, writer Eugene O'Brien, DOP Paddy Jordan, uh, composer Cormac O'Halloran, and actor Lorcan Cranach, a fantastic big group of <laughs> delightful people have joined us today. So welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So I suppose firstly, it would be great to, um, it's a wonderful story. It would be great to just get a little bit of background about the origin of uh, this lovely, very localized story down in Kerry um, and how it came about. I suppose Eugene and Cleaner are probably best served to talk about that. Eugene, do you want to uh, take the story part? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, um, I can't remember now. It's so long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, originally, originally it was it was. Um, T.J. Cahar, we're mean, looking for a female-led story. That's yeah, we're that's looking for a female-led story. Yeah. And we had kicked around lots of ideas and we clean had kind of approached myself and Declan really and said, let's, you know, think of an idea for this, um, for this scheme. And um, we, we kicked around many things and I had a, a character from a while ago um, called Bear, who was the kind of, a, you know, he, he was a... <clears throat> ex-alcoholic kind of mad man, uh, lobster fisherman, uh, unreconstructed kind of male. And we, I, I wanted to get him into something. And then we had an idea of himself and his daughter. And then we started to really think about the daughter more. And I've always been fascinated anyway about stories about people coming home. I'm from the country, I'm, you know, uh, myself. And just that that whole way of, th that whole thing that never leaves you going home. You always called home, home, you know. So I wanted to do something about that. And what if this relationship was very strained? And then we kind of got into it. And uh, I mean, and then Kleena came up. I mean, you were the one who suggested the the, the whole world of the Navog racing. Mm -hmm. Um and that was that was a real key to it. Then we said, okay, we we have this great world to set this in, to set our father daughter story in, and then we just started working on it. I mean, that's it. And you sit down and you, you we we myself and Cleaning would talk for hours and hours and hours in the room. I go away and write treatments, and we talk for another hours and hours more treatments, and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And at one stage, it was very much the it was at the all female naval team was going to take on an all male team who were kind of evil and it was that kind of stuff so we felt this was a bit overcooking the pot a little bit so we got rid of that and certainly lockdown helped us in a way because we couldn't yes. shoot the film and, and also that gave us a lot of time to really look at a script that we had and then we started to really pare back the script and we had a big backstory in the film about what had happened between the father and the daughter and what and that the the daughter had inadvertently caused the mother's death which was all very kind of you know and we felt we didn't need that either it was too much so we just paired it back paired it back uh, so that these people actually weren't at odds with each other the the the, the alarming thing about it was that they never spoke about anything so they got along in the kind of a way that you do you know um, where you don't want to court any controversy or any tension, you know. So, so I think that was that was a more truthful version of this relationship until they finally have to face each other and have it out, um, and the daughter has to have it out with the father. So, so, so really, the, the, this this long gap of COVID really helped us, and we got very good support from uh, Leslie uh, McKim in the film board. Um, she gave great notes towards the end of the process, and. Um, so it that was it, and we ended up with something that was quite different to what we had started out with. That's a fair enough. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
And, and Kleene, can you tell me a little bit about the uh, what what made you suggest the Navo racing? Because it's such a like rowing them there is is uh, you know it's it's a crazy thing. thing. Yes, and very yeah. difficult to shoot as your as our director will tell you about. But uh, well, the couple of things I've been going to Corcoquina, um all my life. And going back there, as as, De as uh, Eugene was talking about, going home, it is like going home for me um, every summer. And Nevo Gracing was a huge part of our season, a seasonal a tradition. And I loved it. And I just thought, wow, would it be so powerful to see four women under a Nevo? Um, and then also, I suppose the landscape, which is, which, Declan, you know, has taken full advantage of in our beautiful film. You know, it's there. It's the permanence of it, particularly if you're feeling heartbroken, grieving. You go back there. It's reassuring. Something about it exposes you and opens you up, which I think happens fabulously in a beautiful way for Aoife. Um, and there's something about Eugene and I used to talk about, I imagine being in that boat and the physicality of it, you know, that that might actually help her to get this pain out. And, um, you know, that in a way the Naivogue holds her, it contains her, um, and it's a way through grief. It's, I think, uh, yeah, you know, it did more, it delivered more than I think we ever thought it would. That's, mm. that's for sure, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and yeah. I, I think the trick was to find when we're writing it to find the how, how you marry the father daughter story and the yeah. emotion of that with the sports movie. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because in earlier drafts, it was a little bit kind of sport movie, and then father daughter father was daughter. kind of you know. <laughs> so the whole thing was to try and meld them in together, and and I think, I think uh, that that was re really done and and really happened in the in the, in the final big exciting race at the end of the film, and um, so I was really personally happy with that, how that worked out. And we worked very, very hard, Nathan, to make sure that you know, given the budget restrictions, you know, that the Cine Car has, so we actually did shoot it in Kerry, which was kind of the heart and soul of the story. Uh, Declan was on tour for a little bit. We, we looked at a few different kind of um, kind of locations, kind of, but, you know, really always came back to this has to be shot in Kerry. It's where, as I said, the heart and soul of the story is. And I think anyone who sees it and, and of Paddy's beautiful work and Declan's gorgeous shooting and you know that it did have to be Kerry so it um we spent a lot of time making sure that it happened there and we're delighted that it did yeah uh, and and Declan and I suppose um pa Paddy as well um whenever you were first informed about the Nate Vogue aspect and the rowing aspect <laughs> what we're coming at it from a visual point of view um what what were your initial thoughts about taking yeah. that challenge I guess well I think um I mean the Nate Vogue end of it thing was always very important I mean apart from the visual just the the idea of of uh Aoife sort of coming home and coming out of herself and getting involved um, and, and the team seemed to be the ideal opportunity to get her out of herself, um, you know, and it just happened to be a naval, which, couldn't, you know, we couldn't have picked a more difficult sport to do, you know, it couldn't be, you know, track racing or something. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it, it was key to uh, her interactions with, with the other women, you know, the four of them in the boat, that was key to bringing her out of herself. Um, and as usually said, trying to uh, align the the story with Bear with uh, and, and the story of the race at the same time, um, but yeah, in terms of practicalities of it, um, I mean it's something that myself and Paddy talked about a lot, um, and uh, trying to figure out, you know, <clears throat> it's it's um, you know they say don't don't shoot with 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 uh, kids or animals, and they should add boats to that list as well because it's one of the hardest things I've ever done. It's like you know you've got all these different elements and they're all moving in different directions all the time. And you're trying, but you want to, you know, you want to line up your shot and you want to get your shot. Um, so yeah, no, it, it was tricky. And you know, it, it was a tight enough schedule. I think mean, it was 25 days and, and the weather plays a huge factor obviously as well, because, you know, if it's too windy out there, then you can't bring the boats out because they're, they are made of, you know, <laughs> it's a very light canvas on, on a wood frame. 
Um, so it doesn't take much for them to be uh, pushed around on the waves. Um, so yeah, no, that was, it was no challenging. Tail, exactly. No tail. No what? No yes, tail. No tail. Yeah, exactly. So they're literally just sitting on top of the water. Um, but it was great. And, you know, it, it required the four or four actresses to really learn how to roll properly. So that, they, you know, because it's, it's not, it's not easy. Um, so they were, they, all four of them trained, they all trained separately because they're all in different places. Like Kate was in London, the other, other Kate in Dublin. Um, uh, Kelly was in London as well. You know, they were all over the place. So it was only in the last week or two before we started shooting that they were able to actually get into the same boat together. Um, uh, and then myself and Paddy had to figure out ways of, Paddy had to get, get in there with them most of the time, actually, <laughs> um, in order to shoot, because we wanted to feel like you were in the boat with them, you know, not to be always just shooting from from a distance. Uh, we wanted to get the camera in, so you got the experience of being in, in the boat um, and in, in the tick of the action. Um, and maybe Paddy can talk about a little bit about um, how we came about <laughs> Figuring out a, the best way, you know, we, we talked about gimbals and always all the ways to shoot it. And it was Paddy's suggestion that we, you know, we just go handheld. He said, you know, I can get in there and I can, um, I can get what we need. It's not right, Paddy. That's that's right, Declan. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a funny one. It was a funny one for me. Um, about fifteen, well, ten to fifteen years ago, I'd shot a a, a documentary series um, for TG Car called Winter Namara. And it basically featured a guy called Portugal Denine, uh, who builds Navogues. Um, and we we followed him like county by county as he um kind of sailed up the coast essentially and met people, that type of show. And so I'd had a little bit of a rehearsal with that because we'd often filmed him in the Navog um back then, but obviously. The big difference is trying to shoot drama, like trying to shoot a story is very different than getting like a piece to camera from a essentially a presenter. So, it, yes, it was a big challenge. And there was various other factors at play, Declan, if you remember, like it was it was also the fact that I think from an insurance point of view, it essentially um we often use like the handheld we'd often use like an easy rig to take some of the weight of the camera but i think from an insurance point of view it literally needed to be handheld so that kind of literally myself and the camera weighed about as much as the, the four or five women <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it was it was tough i mean it it, it was tough and then and then like from my point of view i think it was also really difficult because as beautiful as Dingle Peninsula is, the weather, I mean, it's its extremely dramatic, but the weather keeps changing. And obviously, as Declan knows, probably his concern was more about can we shoot at all? And then I was kind of worried about the lighting continuity, things like that. That's the kind of things that keep me awake at night. Um but yeah, it was it was it was very much a challenge. Well, I, I do think it's it, it's 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 definitely um, important to say that um, it's incredibly immersive, like, um, and it felt so uh, captivating when watching it on the big screen, like you know, you like a heart in the mouth sort of stuff. So um, I, I feel that, that 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 risk that risk <laughs> risk versus reward definitely paid off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I suppose that's obviously accompanied as well from uh, Cormac just to bring you in in terms of uh, composing the, the the original score. Can you tell me a little bit about? I'm sure you were probably happy enough that you didn't have the remit of being in the boat, but can you tell me a little bit about trying to blend in the, uh, the oh, soundtrack to sort of accompany that? I wouldn't necessarily say that there was talk of me uh, getting into a boat at one point, but I think it, it was it was only yeah. a scheduled thing that prohibited that, and maybe uh, there's still a bit of dignity there, thankfully. Um, yeah, the I kind of came in, um, Declan and I had just finished an, a, a couple of episodes of a thriller together, and he kind of sh shared the script with me, and we, we spoke about it. Um, and I kind of went away and read the script and sort of mapped out what I thought would be a good approach to the score, um, and myself and Cleona sat down and discussed the sense of loss that Aoife was feeling and how um, that really kind of resonated with me at the time. I know Fiona as well. And we sort of said, look, 
this might be an interesting way to start tackling the score. So the first thing we wrote, or the first thing I wrote was the, um, the sewing room scene, which is basically a violin played so quietly. So basically myself and the violin player came in here at like half five in the morning. So, so there was no noise outside or anything like that. And I just asked him to play as quietly as we possibly could. And we used these really sensitive microphones so that you just, just could hear the kind of the hair of the bow on the string and that sort of scratchiness and just to give us that intimacy. Um, and that basically we just layered that up kind of note by note by note until we had the sewing room team. And then that was kind of our jumping off point. And from there, then I, I, you know, while I had to sort of capture the sense of loss, I also had a massive sports movie to, you know, make, make exciting or help be more exciting, let's say. So I would take all those sounds and dump them into modular synthesizers and all those kind of long kind of synthetic kind of beds and all that that you hear at the start are actually born from recordings of acoustic instruments. So there's violins, there's trumpets, there's uh, ukuleles at one point, all really twisted and morphed and all of that. So the idea being that I would kind of have a palette that was from, let's say, Bear's Old World and from the tradition of current racing, all that, but juxtaposed with, you know, pulses and ostinatos and tones and frankly, something a little bit different as well, because I think one of our concerns was that, you know, we didn't want to just put a kind of a traditional Irish movie or traditional sports movie score on it at all, you know, and anything big we tried to offer it up just didn't work, you know, like we couldn't throw an orchestra at it. So, um, so yeah, so I think having those limitations, not limitations, but kind of confining ourselves to very certain ways of thinking led to try to do something different, I hope. So, yeah, it's all in. Excellent, excellent. And uh, just to bring um, Lorcan in as well, there's a lot of mention of Bear. I'm just interested in knowing, Lorcan, what your thoughts were whenever you first read the script. Um, I got to know that you were taking on the enigmatic character of Bear, I guess. Well, uh, my first thought was, why me? I don't look, I'm not, I'm not like a bear. <laughs> so, um, but I, I was, no, it was absolutely a, a joy to do. It really was. Um, an extraordinary thing and I, I I think you know listen to what everybody's been saying I actually drew quite one of the long straws because you know for a lot of the a lot of the movie I'm uh, I mean in the confines indoors and it and I didn't have to deal with you know the weather and the vagaries of it and, the, and you know and the, I would have <laughs> on occasion I have you know to have chats with Declan who's about to go out onto the water with the girls uh, for the rest of the day and I'd sort of nod sympathetically about the difficulty of doing that and disappear back into the comfort of the bar with the gin and tonic. Um, but I, um, I, 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 I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm, it was just, it, to be immersed in that world was just, you know, um, extraordinary, fantastic. I did go out a, a little bit with them. I went out rowing once or twice. I knew, I knew very little about the sport, um, and I, I found it um, a, a fascinating place to be, a fascinating activity to be involved in, and uh, I, I, I kind of, I, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I thought. It was great to work on the script, and I was—I'm not uh, the Gael Gore that I, I wish I was, but I, I was so supported in all that by Cleana and uh, Moira Rochelle, who was it was a it was a, a great, fantastic teacher down there as well. So uh, I know it was wonderful. It was really, really fantastic, and the scenes, um, you know, it, with the interior scenes were what was brilliant about the way of working was that we had the time to the time to examine them and the time to you know and Declan and Eugene were just so collaborative when it came to when it comes to working on the script for that it was just it was fantastic it really was and I, I suppose um you know you, you mentioned there about your 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 Irish um I feel that if you if Cine Carr continues going from stride to stride there's no doubt that you're going to be one of the best Irish speakers in well, all of Ireland <laughs> you're you're certainly getting the most practice out of anyone in the country well um <laughs> yeah I, I don't know I, I, I wish I could share your optimism but there you go um but um no who knows I mean it is extraordinary how uh 
the strength that that Sinicar is is going to at the moment. It's it's just fantastic, and I, I I I'm really really proud to be part of that that journey at the moment. You know what I mean? And yes, I'd love to be. I'd love to see it be part of it, and and, and I hope you know that it does continue. Um, and certainly, if the Oscars are to go by and all of that stuff, and you know, and and what the the language is now being, it's 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 uh, you know it's becoming more and more universal i think and and that's fantastic um i i i was just going to say though that you know in terms of what paddy was saying about actually working in it uh, i'm working in the in the in the environment i mean one of the 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 the, the difficulties of actually um you know, working on the on the water was uh, uh, you're often told to try and find the lens. Do you know what I mean? Um, but finding the lens on a on a boat that's going up and down and another boat that's going sideways and it was just it was kind of it was it was great fun. It was really good. It was really good. And your Irish is so much better, Lurkan and Nish. Oh, Gramila. <laughs> <laughs> I guess kind of until then, kind of free and Gwelga, I guess the cutter of on and Swain of Tev here, the Marielle there, to you know, to on Kjol, to Gokrud, to on Art, to she, Kangle to Lakeila, Kun Hog, you know, scale on a, could was a local scale local, you know, I guess until then, a Rallam, it kind of say Obrien on Gwelga, Kun Kerrigle. I shouldn't all trust my leg and unlock that now. On a guest, Nathan. Well, Captain Fane, go touch go all night and scale. Um, go go and share go more less. Um, Tasco ta Ethan son. Ten she has spile. Glock me less better go sail. Cast the came like clear no the head. Ach tagen she while I guess. Tan a tradition care now, ta ride it in a vernot care na gis grucht, em tan a rosn and a bogalanan and sales and a rig, I guess. Shin tradition the hottest on the dolem gavetamisht and scale the ancient. The Laura Murphy, Eugene Declan Clare's my fane, Erin scale son, Kalina tacht the while it's a creep rishte. Ach darlum, it's Scale on our test, scale on her guine, Agus, a Captain Gugurin Chick of Moorlesh, my Echentour and Scanon toss spas now, Cunus, um, Agasaskum Lurk on Gabralatsi at the spa son Idrina Rarkana. Oh, yeah. I didn't think Declan, Agus Eugene, Agus Gandalf and Agrahor Gareth. Dear Hun spas, Captain Gurb Galling. On Tirochts on the side, the Horkogina, Agnardige, Kunskelife, ancient Kinte's character Ella A. Darlum. Agasin's son, well, you know, is size Kirich me, so my visa can scan on a Yenov, Agashohe Mohet scan on, Nila Machresh, Clarke, Drama, Le Eugene, or Le Declan. Uh, drama series, August documentaries, the Verica, August Erin, Ach Shahe Machet Skanon, August Dirtlum Fame, when the Tomkin Skanon in a Beshenga Elling, August Beshek Yuri. Shine, yeah. Katahan Latsa, Katahan Latsa Fane Skanon. Katahan Katahan Latsa Fane Skanon. Ah, well, um, Katma is Gareb, um, to to a reach nil to nil to nil and well going with the high local to to she it's it's tripping me up um not to yeah act to like you know I can to a shin trust na a couple of them has gone on uh Aaron up on her and like on 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 Blaine show go will uh na scale to art to let to to she resonating the Dini her her on uh Harlar yeah, uh, August Tashin Ta Rodagan on a Himmel Fui Scale Co Nilisum Scale Cap to Nibeg Ain Spas to go. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Shane. So Tasha in the scale, the scale bugger the sheets in the Kina will Dini Harlar uh on a kangle to the I guess Tasha. Uh, I feel this is this is a, a perfect example, a perfect embodiment of 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 how pertinent uh, um, a local story can be when executed this well. I guess you know. Yeah, great. I, I think I, we, we said it before. I think uh, down in Curry that uh, it's it's it seems to be that a lot of the Sinicar films are are really leaning into that local um, that local feeling and telling stories that are outside of the pale are, you know, whether it's in Waterford or it's Galway or it's, or it's in our case, Kerry. Um, and, you know, and it's not Wicklow pretending to be Kerry or Wicklow pretending to be Cork, uh, you know, because, you know, we all know what Wicklow looks like and we all know what Kerry looks like. And it's, it's a real luxury to be able to go to the real place. And because you can't fake that and you can't fake the involvement as well of, of the locals, you know, we had um, terrific, help from Monza who was there our local um, Navog uh, teacher you know she she runs herself and uh, Karen run this um, Navog school and training then in, in Dingle um, and to have that sort of involvement to have all the all the kids who were also racing for us in the film um, it, was just, it was great that that feeling uh, comes across in the film I think as well just to you know the, the sense of community um, that's down there it spills over into the film. I, I just can I just add to that? I see the deck the the idea that we all went down and we were living there in the community for the six weeks, the five to six weeks that we were there yeah. shooting it. We weren't all going back to our houses or in or around yeah. the Dublin area, but we actually became, yeah. you know, to be experience that community was was uh, was very, very um, I think it contributed greatly to to what we were actually trying to do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think you also you can't uh, you can't um, replicate like was mentioned earlier about the weather and the location. You know, it sort of comes with the territory. If you're filming down there, I was speaking to the team behind God's Creatures who filmed up in Donegal. And it's the same, the same, the same conversations were had about doing stuff out on a boat. Like you know, you don't know what you know the sunny days are going to be the bad days and the bad days are going to be the good days you just don't know what to expect and i feel that sort of adds to the drama of it all really to help it come across on screen yeah unless you're standing on a pier in the morning and there's a fog covering everything you've got you know loads of extras loads of boats and you can't go out and the local the local experts are saying oh that fog will lift in an hour and you're there four hours later and it still hasn't lifted <laughs> so, <laughs> It can be a little bit stressful, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> but we got we got away with it. I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and can I can I ask just about the 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 cast? Obviously, Lorcan is here. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about Caps and Kelly because that dynamic on screen is so important. And I, and I think there's there's a really really strong chemistry between the two of them as the story unfolds. Um, yeah. So, um, well, the casting, because we were casting during COVID, which, you know, uh, well, we shot during COVID as well, but casting in COVID is kind of weird because it's all done, uh, a lot of it is done over Zoom. Um, <clears throat> but we were, we were lucky in that uh, we were able to bring a few people in um, to see them in person. Now, I'd worked with Kelly before on, on a show, um, but we had... Yeah, I suppose we, we just brought we brought in a few people. We didn't see too many people. Um, we just brought in a couple. And, you know, myself, Eugene and Kleena were, uh, were there for the, for the auditions. And, yeah, she just, she brought something to the part. Again, it's, it's about, uh, it, it's not always obvious, I suppose. <clears throat> you, don't, you don't always know exactly what it is you're looking for until it's there in front of you. Um, and when Kelly came in, we could just see, that she had the right feeling that we wanted uh, for the part. Um, and the same, you know, uh, with uh, Kate, and, Kate and Rachel, um, who actually, we, Rachel was, because Rachel was based in London, we never got to meet her until she turned up. You know, again, that was, that was done over Zoom. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a leap of faith when you haven't been in a room with somebody as well. It's, 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 uh, it's something we've all become used to, but... Um, uh, I'm looking forward to getting back, going back to being in the room with people. It's um, 
you know, it's it's a it's not always the same. But we were, they were, uh, you know, it's tricky when you've got four people then who you need to click. You also need, you know, um, uh, Lorcan and Kelly as Eva and Bear. They need to, they need to work together as well. Um, so, you know, it's it's uh, it's always a bit of a, a gamble. Um, and uh, but I think it really paid off. I, I think you can see that there's from the very first scene between Eva and Bear that there's history between them. Without them ever having to say anything, you know, which is uh, which is terrific. And uh, for Eugene and Kleena, was there what, what? What did you feel in terms of? There's always, I'm sure, um, a fascination in terms of bringing the characters that you sort of create to life. Um, in terms of the, did you have people? Did you have certain uh, people in mind? And like what you're talking about there, trying to get a unified team that would really come across and have that chemistry on on screen as 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 a cohesive unit well I, I suppose the fact that they're they um eugene had written them in the sense that that they are very different and they have their own backstory and they they're all looking for something and to want to change something about their own life so that that's there in the in the writing i guess and then to well i mean the women sure they're fantastic they were they were <laughs> they brought more to it didn't they eugene yeah. Than we could have well, imagined. Really, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, on all, all really good actors that we had, um, they come in and they, they do something else with the part that you'd never imagined, you know. Mm -hmm. They bring their own heart and soul to it. And um, you're surprised. And that's always great. And it, bring, it, it just, it's it, it always a, the most extraordinary thrill. It's worth all the pain of the rewriting <laughs> over three years. Uh, but when you see these people embodied on the screen, it's an incredible feeling. And I didn't really, I mean, I never really write with people in mind, personally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't even describe characters physically that much in scripts, because, you know, uh, and just people come and make make these, make the characters their own. And it's extraordinary. And, uh, Lorcan and Kelly worked so well together. It was difficult, difficult stuff, you know. Um, it was it was a lot of emotion, a lot, a lot of stuff that caught up, a lot of trauma, and it all has to come out. And it 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 was fantastic. And then everyone in the boat, that the four women in the boat were amazing. Uh, Kate and Rachel and Coach and Kelly just bonded together as a team. You believe they were a team. They trained so hard. And Kate and Monza said they could roll, you know, they'd win the they'd win the fucking mm -hmm. regatta if they came back down next year, you know. Which, so that was incredible because you see shots of them and they're going at a lick. And it's them, you know, you see yeah. it's them. Yeah. And the racing sequences are really, really well done. I mean, I I like Lorcan, I was able to kind of sit in the hotel and drink tea <laughs> um, and and while they were out in the wilds, you know, of this thing. So, uh, but just to see the the, the, the dailies coming back, the rushes coming back and you saw what they were getting. So, because um, that really had to work, you know, it's a, it is a sports movie is it, um, and it has to be exciting. And, and uh, Paddy and Deccan did an extraordinary job there and the whole crew getting mm -hmm. getting that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. And just I, I think obviously it. the um, the Cormac's music, I mean, all, all over but particularly for the races that was a tricky one to do you know because, and we talked a lot about uh in in advance even before we started shooting we had talked about you know um wh whether tempo would be a thing and i think that's that's uh, you know changing f following the tempo of the race and their increased speed which is not something you hear that often i think in music cormac you know <laughs> the change a, a tempo to start slow and is gradually speeding up uh, and it worked really well for the races, I thought. Oh, yeah. It helped huge. You're, so you're much. muted there, Colin. <laughs> Sorry, someone had to do it. Um, <laughs> I think the, the, the hardest race actually to score was, was her first race, which is kind of uh, the cue is called Aoife versus Bear. So it's basically it's when the first time she gets yeah. back in the, the Curric at all and Bear's, Bear's shouting at her and stuff. And that tempo map to that just goes like that all the way up. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then just drops. So that actually paved the way for the rest of the racing sequences yeah yeah but no i, I it, it's um i think you know it adds so much to the film it's uh it, it worked out really really it to another really level well. didn't it yes it did yeah yeah <laughs> and and lorcan uh you know while he didn't get into a and well you get into an evoke 
camera. But uh, you did do your own um, boat work. We should point uh, yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have to. I just have to sort of flag up as well. You know, as Eugene was saying, the 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 work that the, the girls were doing, but. You know, it, it, just to sort of remind people about you know the great work that somebody like Killian Garvey was doing as well, and 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 um, you know, and uh, so you know the, there was a, there was more. The cast was a larger cast than just than just the four girls and me. You know what I mean, which was great, and and uh, there was some you know fantastic like Liam Heffernan and stuff like that. It was brilliant stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I love the. Uh, I I really enjoyed the commentator on the on the pier as well. I thought that was really cool. on which yeah, yeah, on which yeah. yeah, pure thing. <laughs> um, and 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 just before I want to ask about just like bringing it together in the in the in the edit, but before I do, just it was touched upon there. But I know we discussed at the beginning, Paddy, about. Uh, you know, getting into the boat and the discussions of that, the complexities of that, but the the, the, the film is incredibly cinematic and it, it's beautifully shot. So I would like to just touch upon uh, what conversations yourself and Declan had just in terms of the feel that you were looking for to, you know, it's been mentioned that, you know, whenever you filmed in Kerry, like it, it, the location is a character in itself. Like how, how do you capture that? What what sort of discussions do you have to have about capturing that on, on film, I guess? Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, without without a shadow of a doubt, um, I mean, as Lorcan said, what a privilege and what a pleasure to be like in that environment, to live and to shoot. Like every every drive to and from work in the morning, early mornings and the evenings was just jaw jaw droppingly beautiful. Um, and I suppose, I suppose, yeah, obviously for Declan, it was important to kind of to get that sense of the landscape. Um, I kind of, in my head, I kind of saw the landscape as the kind of spirit of the mother or something, it's, you know, th this kind of big, huge thing that surrounds the characters. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think like in terms of conversations, like it's, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of technical stuff is decided based on constraints which sounds like a negative but is actually the thing sometimes that you know having you know I think Declan always works with the sense and he said, certainly said it on this project that we'll set ourselves like a number of rules so just to kind of have a kind of a stylistic set of rules um, so obviously we, we wanted to keep it kind of relatively um we wanted the actors to be able to move around freely so we shot handheld it wasn't very like grip heavy we didn't have a lot of like dotties and tracks and cranes and things like that so so we were able to move kind of at a bit of a pace and with the weather we need to be able to jump in and out of locations and things like that um so that would be the main thing I and mean, we decided to shoot we did some lens tests and we shot on a set of um 1970s size B speeds, which are beautiful old lenses, which I think I don't know, kind of hard to hard to describe. When you talk about lenses, it's hard to kind of encapsulate exactly what a lens does or doesn't do. But it kind of, I think, as you said, that kind of cinematic feeling that the shallow depth of field, the the vintage quality of the glass, kind of somehow resonates with the landscape. So I don't know, Declan, was there anything else? Um, yeah, so I mean, it's very. We we wanted to be careful not to just make it, you know, pretty pictures, I suppose, because it's which is very hard to do down in in somewhere as beautiful as Kerry. Um, so you know, we weren't going out of our way to uh, always have you know stunning landscapes, but it you know it, it was always going to be our backdrop, uh, so you couldn't deny it. But you know, we weren't. I don't think we you know, and even in the grade, we didn't push it too too hard in the in the in a warm direction necessarily um i suppose uh it uh because it, you know we didn't want to I suppose we always said it, it can't be a bold fault commercial <laughs> you know in terms of it can't just look like pretty pictures um but i think that's helped as well by uh patty's really good at at uh because because we decided to go handheld uh he's really good at feeling what an actor is going to do 
you know, particularly, you know, I was watching him with, with Kelly a couple of times and, you know, he knows when to get in there to capture a moment uh, without, without getting in their way, but just uh, he can feel the emotion of the scene and the camera kind of, uh, it, it, when he's as free as he is, when, he, when he, he's not on a tripod or on a dolly, he's free to get in there and capture that emotion. And, and I think there's something that Paddy does really well. Lovely. And can you tell me just in terms of then um, the sort of workflow that was involved in post-production and then piecing all this together to sort of get the the final product? Um, I don't know, Claire, if you might want to just discuss it in terms of seeing the all the different pieces of the puzzles coming together and in the edit and um, taking shape. Yeah, well, it was a massive uh, undertaking, of course, and... Uh... Uh, the, the nice thing, of course, about the Cine Car is that, you know, the, the funding is there from the three different sources. And then we had, of course, the funding from the 481. And in order to shoot it down in Kerry, um, there wasn't much debate, but we d really wanted to shoot in Kerry. Um, we got the regional uplift, which kind of really helped, really helped that. So in terms of the, the funding was all there when we started off. So we really had no fears about, you know, some some people going in to shoot films and, and the funding isn't always there. Uh, there's an awful lot in it, as I mean, as everybody in the room knows, and it's about kind of bringing all the uh, different elements together. You know, um, I'm very much kind of in in the kind of background, looking after the legal, the cash flow, the financing, the, you know, all that sort of thing, the contracting, and just making sure that kind of the the show um, is kept on the road, the wheels are kept on the wagon. You know, so um, we had a wonderful kind of production team, um, and we had some people from kind of Kerry, of course, we we. Uh, uh, employed um, some people locally um, and I'm kind of very committed to kind of the regional development so that for me was very very strong um, and very important I've worked with um, Screen Ireland for training so we had a training system as well in there uh, for people so um, I think everyone kind of benefited in in, in lots of ways from it um, so really um, I, as I said I was kind of very much in the background working very much hand in glove with Cleana uh, from the time we just before we got the development funding actually so um and then we had of course all the COVID delays you know which kept you know which kept um kind of getting in the way but then in another way you know when Eugene and Declan were talking about developing the story and Cleana working with Eugene in developing it that kind of those COVID delays did kind of have a beneficial mm -hmm. effect in that sense you know there was time there that you know you may not normally have because you know, once kind of the, the funding is there, they're, they're, everyone's looking for when you're going to shoot it now, you know. So, uh, um, yeah, so that that really was that really was my role. But I'd say, you know, and Cleana did an awful lot of the the, the driving kind of from the from the, um, looking after the the actors and, um, you know, very much across kind of everything else, really, Cleana. Hmm. And I, Nathan, you were asking about the post as well. Uh, we used Egg Post in, in Dublin, who and Garrett Young was our editor. I, I, yeah, I've worked with Garrett a lot over the years. Um, and Nick Panteras was the colorist, and Aza Hand mixed it. Um, and yeah, it was I mean, a relatively straightforward kind of post process, I suppose. Um, uh, because we lost we lost a few days in um, to weather when we were in the initial shoot. Uh, we had to go back down to, we, we, uh, at Easter. We shot just before Christmas, October, November. We had to go back the following Easter for two days just to do some boat pickups. So we had a we had done a complete edit without. We were missing bits of the race basically, um, and so we'd done a complete picture edit, and we just put it to bed uh, until we could go back down until the weather got good enough that we could go back down and shoot again. Um, but it was great again to have that that space from locking the picture, going out and getting some pickups and then go back into the edit again. Cause you had, you know, you just get a, little, a new perspective on things. Um, and we, you know, it, it wasn't, it was a, uh, I can't remember exactly how long we had to edit, but you know, it felt like we had enough time to, you know, uh, to take time over it, get, get away from it for a bit and then come back into it again. Um, and it, it obviously uh, Cormac, constantly working away in the background as well feeding us cues and um it's uh but yeah it was, it was pretty straightforward post 
really. Yeah, I, thought, I think for me, having that first, that initial lock, uh, uh, as you described, even that we were missing parts of the race and stuff, was, it was actually worked out to be quite a nice cushion, you know, because I could be trying yeah. things in different places, you no, know, kind of knowing what was coming. But uh, in terms of timelines, and, you know, I've been in other projects where it's just like, you do weeks and deliver everything, and that's it. And this really wasn't that. And it was time to experiment with stuff. And as, as Declan saying, you know, to be feeding people temp and ideas and stuff that they can try in the edit, which is a, a nice luxury that we don't always have, you know. Um, and then in terms of if we were discussing earlier about, you know, uh, the uh, projects and stories like this resonating uh, internationally, but um, the film premiered in Galway, and I'd love to hear just about some of the feedback you've had even locally and down in the Kerry community and everything, just in terms of telling the story. Well, everybody in Kerry, of course, loves it. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, they're delighted with themselves, you know, um, of course. So half, of the, half of them are in it. Yeah, half of them are in it. And, you know, uh, the rowing club, and as, as we've mentioned, Nathan, of course, so I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I mean, they're just <laughs> loving it no matter what. So, you know, uh, Galway was good. But again, I find it very um, difficult to judge um an audience i don't know maybe others would be better talking about that i just it was it was eugene do you remember like always oh, was, was well, it, it seemed to be delight but it was my first time experiencing that i found it excruciating you you <laughs> you <laughs> you um well it is it is nerve-wracking yeah um it is and you're living every moment of the film <clears throat> you know every, from the from the time the irish film board logo comes up on the screen to the end you're you know oh mm-hmm. but um i i really started to relax like the screening goal i really enjoyed because i thought the, i thought the pete the room was really with the film and they were really they really listened to it and going for it and um i i actually started to actually be able to enjoy the film which was amazing i didn't think i would but i really you know i, I felt i felt i felt re- people were really going with it and the story was working and the emotional connection with the father, the daughter, all of that stuff. So uh, it was good. I felt very happy after it. And I'm dying to see it uh, out and about. And we haven't seen it that much with an audience. You know, we saw it in Kerry. That was fantastic screening uh, at, at Kerry Film Festival. And um, we had a really good, if the screening last week, uh, there was a really, really great um, reaction to it there. So uh, yeah, looking forward to getting it out and about now properly this year, you know. With uh, with our um, distributors, Parkland and Eclipse, and so it'll be um, exciting, yeah. And that's that's due to come out um, mid July, Nathan. Mid July, yeah, hopefully. Excellent stuff. Well, guys, listen, thank you so much for speaking with me. It's a pleasure to get to speak to you all, um, and the very best of luck with the upcoming uh, announcements. And uh, hopefully, I'll see y'all in person. Relatively soon. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks, David. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. 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 Bye bye.